Well, hello everyone, long time no see. Today we're gonna to start our chapter seven journey and we are getting deep into integrals now. So we're gonna learn in this chapter all sorts of methods to help us find integrals of more and more crazy, crazier functions. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, and here we go. This chapter is gonna be the Harry Potter chapter. So uh, here's a little bit, a little bit about Harry Potter. Um, and the major thing we need to talk about for this particular section is Quidditch, which is, of course, is like Wizards lacrosse or Wizards basketball or, heaven forbid, Wizards soccer. The thing that I find interesting about Quidditch is that it's played not only, you know, on an XY axis, but also with height, with a Z axis. So there's a truly a three-dimensional game that's going on here with Quidditch. In any case, we're going to be looking at differential equations. So any equation that involves a derivative is called a differential equation. Solving a differential equation um, is going to require us to use antiderivatives in order to find, well, yeah, the antiderivative. Um, as a something which we're, we won't really talk about too much in this course, but is definitely in a college calculus course or a differential equation course, is the order of the differential equation. And the order of the differential equation is just the highest derivative in, in the equation. So if you have a differential equation with a first derivative, it's called a first order differential equation. If you had a third derivative, um, then that would be a third ordered differential equation. Here in AP Calculus A, B, and B, C, we only deal with first order and second order differential equations. So let's get started. Um, to find all the functions that satisfy y, that, sorry, let's pretend that I know how to read. Find all functions y that satisfy dy dx equals 3x squared plus cosine x. Now I know you see it. This is an equality, an equation. So all the rules of algebra still apply to an equation because it, it is just an equation. It's a differential equation, but it's an equation. So we can multiply both sides of the equal sign by dx. And when we do that, we notice that on the right side of the equal sign, we have 3x squared plus cosine x dx. The only variable there is an x. On the left side of the equal sign, we have a dy. And the only variable on the left side is a dy. Because we've separated all the y's to the left and all the x's to the right, we call that step the separation of variables. Here in calculus a, b, and b, c, we're only going to do very simple differential equations that only require uh, some multiplication or division in order to separate the variables. Maybe you'll have to do some regrouping, but nothing is going to be too difficult to that you couldn't separate the variables. If there's a differential equation that you cannot separate the variables in, then that's not really something we're going to deal with in calculus AB and calculus BC. Those kinds of differential equations are the subject of entire semesters worth of things in higher math classes. Uh, in fact, there's a whole class called differential equations that you can take and that will help you solve those. But this is not that class. This is just calculus AB and BC. So after we separate variables, we integrate both sides. Now the left side of the equal sign that you see here has the integral of dy. The right side has an integral of a blank space and we know it should be in that blank space. It should be the integral of 3x squared plus cosine x. And then from here, uh, the left side, the antiderivative of dy is just y. And on the right side, we can use our antiderivative rules. The antiderivative of 3x squared is x cubed. The antiderivative of cosine x is sine x. And because we're doing antiderivatives, we need to put a plus c at the end there. 
This antiderivative with a plus c is called the general solution. Now the general solution represents a family of curves. Each of them differ by a different constant c, and each one of them is an antiderivative for the differential equation. So we are really in the business of finding a family of equations, um, family of curves, family of antiderivatives. Let's move on. If I'm not satisfied with that differential equate with the um, general solution, and I want the one curve that I need, I'm going to need a little bit of extra information. And that extra information is going to be called an initial condition. An initial condition is any coordinate through which the particular solution um, basically goes through in its curve. Uh, we have here that um, a differential equation with an initial condition is called an initial value problem. And it will have a unique solution. And that unique solution is called the particular solution. To help us here, we have a problem which is going to ask us to find a particular solution. We're going to find the particular solution to the differential equation dy dx equals e to the 2x minus 3x with the initial condition 1 comma 1 half. The steps here for finding a particular solution involve finding the general solution. So the first thing we need to do is find a general solution. Start with the differential equation. Multiply both sides by dx. And then we integrate both sides. Now that antiderivative of e to the 2x, that's, we're going to work a little bit on that. I know that the antiderivative has to involve e to the 2x because the derivative of a exponential function is the same exponential function. So that e to the 2x is going to appear, appear in the antiderivative. So let's try just try taking the derivative of e to the 2x. We get that the derivative of e to the 2x is 2 e to the 2x. Now I want the antiderivative of e to the 2x, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And this tells me that the antiderivative to e to the 2x is going to be 1 half e to the 2x. Now the rest of that antiderivative I think you got, uh, just minus 3 halves x squared, and then plus c. So we have our general solution pretty handedly here. Now, the next thing to do is to solve for the constant of integration c. So we're going to start with the given, uh, which is our general solution. And then we're going to substitute our initial condition, which is basically just an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. So in my general solution, when I see a y, I'm going to substitute that 1 half. And when I see an x, I'm going to substitute 1. And then it says that we need to solve for c. And that's just a little bit of algebra. That, that gets me to uh, 2 minus 1 half e squared, which is a totally valid number in the world of calculus. Now that I have my value of c, you're just going to substitute it into your particular solution or into the general solution to create the particular solution. So here's the general solution. And then when I substitute my value of c, I've created the particular solution. So here is our particular solution. Uh, y is equal to 1 half e to the 2x minus 3 halves x squared plus 2 minus 1 half e squared. Now that's, you know, that's definitely not an equation that you want to show your um, little brother in Algebra 1, but perfectly fine here. So let's move on. Now that we know how to find a particular solution, um, and this is a kind of an important pep talk for us here. Students kind of get the sense that 
if you go to school long enough, if you learn enough technique, then you're going to be able to find the general solution and the particular solution for every function imaginable. There will not be a function that I won't be able to integrate. And I hate to break it to you, but there are many functions that do not have an antiderivative. It, it, they just don't. Um, you're going to have to live with the fact that uh, you won't be able to integrate everything. And students who feel like they can find the antiderivative for every function, those are the ones who kind of get a little bit trapped when it comes time to the, for the AP test. Because the AP test loves to give you functions which don't actually have an antiderivative. So you just waste your time trying to find an antiderivative for a function that doesn't exist. So don't, don't feel like you have to take the integral of everything, the antiderivative of everything. It doesn't exist. So we have a differential equation basic. Um, this is cosine of x squared. No, there is none. You can't do that. Um, I won't teach you how to do that. Um, maybe you'll get into an advanced math class and there will be an antiderivative for that. But that's not going to happen in calculus AB. That's not going to happen in calculus BC. So you're just going to have to deal with it. Now, in those cases where the antiderivative doesn't exist, that doesn't mean that we're dead in the water. It means that we have to look to alternative methods for accessing, assessing, those general and particular solutions. And that's a lot of what Section 7.1, especially Day 2 and Day 3, that's what we're going to be concerned about. What happens when I can't find the antiderivative? What do I do? So one of the first things you can do is just write your integral, your function in terms of an antiderivative. So here's that same function that I was saying we won't find an antiderivative for. Um, we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus to give us more information, though. Here's that fundamental theorem of calculus. It says that the integral of a derivative is equal to the antiderivative evaluated at B minus the antiderivative evaluated at A. Very important. Now, we know what the, what the derivative is. The derivative is cosine of x squared. So if I integrate cosine of x squared from 3 to x, that's going to give me f of x minus f of 3. If you do a little bit of algebra and you substitute f of 3 equals 5, you've built yourself an equation for the antiderivative or for the particular solution of f of x that involves the integral. So f of x is equal to 5 plus the integral from 3 to x of cosine t squared dt. That's not a problem. Uh, you don't have to solve that. Don't feel like you got to solve every integral out there. This is a perfectly valid equation and with a little bit of numerical um, how do I say this? With a little bit of uh, numerical methods, like a trapezoidal method, we can actually come very close to the value of that integral from 3 to x of cosine t squared. So we have a particular solution without actually finding an antiderivative. There we go. Let's look at this problem down over here. Rotation about a vertical axis is called yaw. That's like spinning like this. And it's going to turn a broomstick left or right. During the first 10 seconds of Quidditch practice, Harry's broomstick yaw changes by dy dt equals cosine of t squared radians per second with counterclockwise yaw in negative radians. Okay, That's not a big deal. Um, Okay, I got that. Radians per second. At t equals zero seconds, Harry's broomstick has a yaw angle of negative 0.5 radians. So part A, use the fundamental theorem of calculus to write an equation for yt, Harry's yaw 
at t seconds. So here's the fundamental theorem of calculus. yb minus ya is equal to the integral from a to b of y prime t dt. Let's substitute y prime, and we're looking good already. Now, we know that at t equals 0, Harry's broomstick has a yaw angle of negative 0.5. So what I'm going to do, what was typically done, is that right there is an initial condition. So we're going to substitute that into our equation. The lower limit is going to become 0 because we have um, t equals 0 as our time. And then y of 0 is going to be negative 0.5. Okay, um, we want a to create a function for y of x, or y of t, so I'm going to change b to t. But if I do that, I can no longer use t inside the integral. So I'm going to change inside the integral, I'm going to change it to x. And then the last thing to do is to solve for y of t. And there we go. There we go. We have a function for y in terms of an integral. And if we ever needed to find the yaw, we just need to substitute a value for t, which is what we're going to do for part b. Now in part b, we want to find the yaw when t equals 5. All we need to do is substitute 5 every time we see t. And so the yaw at 5 seconds is equal to negative 0 0.5 plus the integral from 0 to 5 of cosine x squared dx. Once I have an equation like that, I can just go to my calculator. And we know how to put this function in our calculator already. We're just going to integrate cosine of x squared from 0 to 5 and add a negative 0.5 and our yaw, wait for it, 0.11146. Now that I have a value here, we're just going to write a little bit of interpretation. And there's nothing to it. Important ideas. Differential equations in AP Calculus A, B, and B, C will take the form dy dx equals some function of x and y. Um, the easiest ones, or the ones that we're going to prefer, are the ones that are only functions of x. But, you know, it could be a function of y as well. And if it's possible to put all of the y's on the left and all the x's on the right, so we have a function of y dy equals a function of x dx, those kinds of differential equations are called separa separable differential equations. And when that happens, we can just integrate both sides of the equal sign to get ourselves an antiderivative. The general solution of a differential equation has a form y is equal to a function of x plus a constant. And a particular solution um, has the same form as a general solution, but it uses x0 and y0 to solve for c all of which we did today. So let's check our understanding. So we're given that dy dx is equal to e to the 2x plus x, and y is equal to 2 when x equals 0. Find a particular solution to the differential equation. Now, uh, e to the 2x plus x, that's our differential equation. And y equals 2, x equals 0. That's going to be our initial condition. Start off by writing out the differential equation and then separating variables. After you've separated variables, remember, only use multiplication or division. You're going to integrate both sides. Now, um, now we're going to integrate both sides. We didn't talk about this a whole lot earlier, but there is a constant of integration that happens with dy. Anytime you take an antiderivative, an a, a constant of, a, of di anti-differentiation will occur. So let's see what happens with that. Let's pay more attention to it this time. Let's integrate both sides. 
there's no guaranteeing that the constant on the left side is equal to the constant on the right side. So we're going to differentiate them by saying one is C1 and the other is C2. And what we're going to do now is we're going to use some algebra to subtract C1 over to the right side. Here's the resulting equation. And I'm going to group C1 and C2. Okay, now that they're grouped together, isn't C1 mi C2 minus C1, isn't that just a constant? A constant minus a constant is a constant. So really there's no reason for me to hold on to C2 minus C1. Their individual um, values don't really matter. What really matters is that you have that they're a constant. So what we do, what we choose to do, is combine C1 and C2 and only put it on the side that has the independent variable. So that's why we only put the constant of integration on the right side because it's a side with the independent variable and we just assume that that constant on the right side has absorbed the constant on the left side. That's our general solution, and now we're going to get a particular solution. So we substitute the initial condition into the general solution. We remember that e to the 0 is 1, so the right side of the equation is 1 half plus c. That gives us that c is 3 halves. Substitute that back in, and you get yourself the particular solution. Now, for letter B, we want to find the value of y when x equals 2. So we're going to use our particular solution. Now this time, we're going to substitute 2 for x. And then we'll just do more algebra to solve for y. And that gives us that y is equal to 1 half e to the fourth power plus 7 halves. So that's all we have for you today. Um, hopefully this was not too bad. We have done some of this work already, and, but now we have names for a lot of things. And uh, I'll see you next time here uh, when we look at what to do when you cannot find an antiderivative. So we'll see you then. Have a good one.